Will you be the one to witness the birth of the incredible Nintendo Entertainment System? The one to play with Rob, the extraordinary video robot, batteries not included. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. Will you be the first to raise the incredibly accurate Zapper and play games like Duck Hunt or action-packed Hogan's Alley and high-flying Kung Fu, each sold separately? Will you be the one to experience the Nintendo Entertainment System? Comes with Rob, Zapper, Control Deck, two controllers, Gyromite, and Duck Hunt. Welcome to the show. Half Glass Gaming, episode number 19. We're having ourselves a little party, a celebratory uh, victory lap, having successfully procured every single amiibo. Did, did we Did we do that? Did we get every single amiibo? There's no. only There's only two, right? Amiib two. There's only Mario and Bowser, right? That's the only ones that I, I, I ever see. I think there's see. a Luigi one. It's the only ones I ever see are Mario and Bowser. So uh, uh, to my left, I have the Rev. Uh, I am here. That's true. And uh, across from me, as always, looking pretty cool with his Batman shirt is uh, just Josh. That's me. Let that settle in for a second. (laughs) And then, of course, as always, with a perfectly timed laugh, it's Mandy. Hey. How's everybody doing? I'm actually feeling pretty good uh, this week. Uh, recently, my fiance went out of town, so I uh, had my girlfriend come over and got to introduce her to all the friends of mine that hadn't met her yet. I'm polyamorous, not an asshole, so yeah. my fiance knew that my girlfriend was coming because yeah. that's that's how polyamory works. And you jerks out there were just judging him, judging them, that, judging them. Thank you. Apologies. I am gender fluid, so yes. the correct pronoun is they or them. Them. Uh, I have a giant bag of lollipops because I stole them from all the banks in the area. I just walked in, grabbed their bowl full of lollipops, dumped them into the bag. Mm-hmm. You should have like made dentist appointments and then like, <laughs> been like, I'm not getting my teeth cleaned. I'm, I'm just... taking your lollipops. <laughs> like, run the long con here. Yeah, I should do that. That that should be the next time I need a big bag of lollipops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> too Canadian to use candy dishes. Finally. Like, I, I see them and I'm just like, ah, I know they're there and I can take one, but I feel kind of guilty about it. How about you, Mandy? What have you been up to? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've been buying things with animals on them. Yeah, that's a thing that she does now. I like clothes with more when they have animals on them. So yeah. I'm trying to collect as many animals as possible. Because Josh likes to pick on me. He was telling me I should get a dress with centipedes on it. <laughs> you should get a dress with centipedes on it. Centipedes are awesome looking. No. Mm. Centipedes are terrible. They're the worst. Mm. Worse than chipmunks. I mean, at least chipmunks are cute. Yeah. I've actually, though, since Josh has said that, I keep seeing like centipede prints on stuff. Like, not women's dresses, but like... We were at Ikea, and they had centipede band-aids, and then, like, we were going to the bank, and some kid got out, and his, like, shorts had centipedes on them, and it's like, really? Now now I'm wondering if there's underwear with centipedes on them right on the crotch. Oh, I'm sure. You could could wear those when you go on a date. Mm -hmm. Just, like, confuse the fuck out of someone when you go home with them. Mm -hmm. You know, you get into the bedroom, you're undressing. This is a mixed signal right here. How am I supposed to take a centipede right on your crotch? I don't Mm -hmm. know. I had an idea to create uh, a men's line of boxer briefs that had uh, a design of a ruler that went across it. (laughs) So uh, I personally have been uh, playing a lot of games recently, something I haven't been able to do much of in the past couple months. And uh, I also was on a Christopher Nolan movie watching kick for some unknown reason. Not actually on a Christopher Nolan movie. No, I I watched... uh, What is it called? Inception. And I think I actually enjoyed it more the third time than I did the second time and the first time. And I recently was starting to watch Interstellar, but I ended up falling asleep. And uh, There's like one good scene in Interstellar, and that's when they're on the water planet. Hmm. And like time is moving really fast. I didn't make it that far. I don't even think I made it into space. That one scene is so good. And then the rest of the movie just kind of drags. They ripped off a wrinkle in time. Hmm. An interstellar. 
Well, I will say, uh, b- before we change topics, that I, I also did just watch uh, the Dark Knight trilogy again. And I will say that the bat suit, I think, is a lot cooler than I had originally thought it was. There's no nipples on it. So there aren't. Right. You got so that. a yeah. step in the right direction. Yeah. Still can't get over his Batman Im- impression. and uh, He'd been playing The Witcher a lot. He's just trying to do Geralt. Huh. Yeah. You know, Christian like, Bale would make a great <laughs> Geralt. Like, he would kill it, man. Maybe if he wasn't so goddamn Scottish and now ancient, uh, Sean Connery would have probably been all right too. <laughs> so, Josh, um, what's new with you? Well, we're approaching the one year anniversary of the launch of Amiibos. Is it that time already? It is. And I have mixed feelings because I was super down on Nintendo for a while and. I've I've recently had some better luck, you know, collecting these things. Mm-hmm. Oh, those plushies are the Yoshi amiibo? They really are fucking adorable. Holy shit. These are the cutest things I have ever seen. I am totally buying one, and then it's going to be with my Charmander. It was me in bed. I sleep with a Charmander. So, but anyways, you're, what, you're back in the game? You're still out there? About, yeah, I got out of the game for, for a bit, but yeah. I'm back in it. But the game done changed. The game done changed, that's for sure. So at this point, uh, before we talk about said changing of game, I'm going to call a break. Um, I'd like to, of course, thank 2XAA and Wheelie out there in the music land. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, iTunes for putting us on there. Uh, you know, if you got a moment, maybe drop a rating, five stars or whatever. <laughs> um, look, you know you enjoy the show, okay? Uh, I'd also like to thank... Uh, Retro Ball, which is quickly becoming uh, my favorite retro video game site. Uh, also, uh, you can, of course, uh, frequent our site, halfglassgaming.com. Stitcher Radio, if you want to switch things up, check us out in a different setting. It sounds the same, but, uh, you know. A big shout out uh, to Aaron Voltenson for the amazing graphics that pop your eyes before we blow your minds. And uh, For the listeners, Aaron's the one who has been doing all of our graphic design since the beginning. Yeah. Uh, she designed her logo. She does the artwork that you see on – if you come to Retrovolve and and listen to the podcast, you'll yeah. see her, her work on every episode. And yeah. You're going to see hands with severed fingers and alligators with ties on. And, and for that. us as Star Wars characters as One Direction. I'd, of course, really like to thank everybody for listening. Tell a friend. Make friends and tell them. Tell somebody you're not going to be friends with uh, very shortly, but but do it before you're not friends with them. And uh, so we'll be back uh, from the break, and we're going to get into some Amiibo Madness. Amiibo Madness. All right, we're back from the break, and we are just pumped full of blood and muscle. And start talking about some fucking amiibos. <laughs> are, are the amiibos doing the fucking, or? Oh, they're fucking. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for some amiibo porn. The only problem is, is that they're sterile, so they aren't really mass producing. <laughs> <laughs> that should not have been as funny as it was. You're... You're killing it, man. Well, hey, let me tell you. <laughs> Speaking of which, though, and I apologize for clearing my throat, but uh, amiibo shortages. That's where we're going to start this. What's the uh, what's the current sitch? Back in episode three, I, I went on a, a pretty vitriolic rant mm-hmm. about how Nintendo is dropping the ball in this amiibo situation. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that trend continues, but I think they've finally been doing a little bit better at keeping things in stock. It would appear they've re-released some of the really rare Amiibos. Mm -hmm. Is it that they're doing better at getting these things out? Or is it that all the people who are just in a mad rush to get them have either got them already or have stopped giving a shit? I definitely think that's part of it. But they're also re-releasing old waves. Mm -hmm. The Little Mac was the most rare and hard to find one. Because rumor has it there was some kind of production error. It shipped in a really tiny amount, and it was a lot of people have never even seen a Little Mac amiibo. Mm-hmm. It appears they created another wave of Little Macs. Uh, they 
created another wave of Marth. They created an, another wave of Green Ninja. And these have kind of started leaking out into stores. And Mandy and I actually went. We spent a lot of our time hunting for amiibos south of Minneapolis and like uh, Bloomington and Richfield and... Mm -hmm. The more affluent suburbs. Yeah, the wealthier suburbs. Mm -hmm. And we we didn't do very well. We We went up north to some places that we won't mention the names of <laughs> and we sounds salacious i got little mac i got uh i got greninja i got i bought a second ganondorf because i didn't the first one i got was from japan and i, I don't want to open it um so i got a second one that i opened and it looks super cool they've released amiibo cards now too mm-hmm well, Nintendo's thing that they said at the beginning is when people were asking them to re-release Amiibos, they were saying, well, no, we, we don't plan on doing that. But eventually we might release Amiibo cards so that they'll be easy for everyone to get. And so they've launched Amiibo cards. Right now they're exclusively Animal Crossing cards. You can get a card of every Animal Crossing villager. Mm-hmm. They're sort of like collectible cards, but they also work with the game Happy Home Designer where you uh, create houses for animals. Animal Crossing residents. Uh, there's a NFC card reader that works with the 3DS, so you can scan in your card and then you can design a home for any villager that you have a card for. Mm-hmm. Problem is that these cards are impossible to get. Of course. Like, impossible. Nobody has them. When I ask for them, people usually get so frustrated with mm-hmm. Nintendo and just sort of start ranting to me about how, like, they sold out of them in an hour and they have no shipment scheduled. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried to buy them online. They're charging like 15 bucks a pack mm-hmm. on Amazon, which I was not going to pay. Uh, the stores, I tr- other stores I tried to buy them from sold out before I could buy mm-hmm. them. So to alleviate the, the stress and the uh, frustration with the shortages of the statue amiibos, they released these cards, which are just as difficult to find. Yeah, if, if not more so. But uh, I, I did find amiibo cards when we were... On our big adventure, and we found mm-hmm. everything. We drove out to one store, and they did have them. They had a whole bunch, and they told us before we went out there that we could only get one pack per person. So I'm like, well, two packs, okay. Mm-hmm. But when we got there, and the guys were like, no, no, you can get as many as you like. You can buy a whole box if you want. And mm-hmm. they were super cool. And so I, I bought a bunch of cards. I have a nice little collection. Thus leaving the next person who wanted them in the same situation you were in. No, I didn't buy all of them. I left <laughs> cards for you. I'm, I'm sure. I'm giving you shit. Mandy even ordered some on some other online service. And she ordered five packs and they gave her four. Clearly, they draw their line at four. But I don't, <laughs> I don't know why that's where yeah. they draw their line. Yeah. If I understand correctly, it's the uh, Splatoon Amiibos that actually also offer like um, – in-game bonus content is that right so the thing the thing with the splatoon amiibos i i ended up getting the girl and the boy but i didn't get there's like a squid do you play splatoon i do okay there's a boy and a girl and a squid and each of these characters will unlock a new set of levels and if you clear the the set of levels you'll get like an exclusive costume Mm -hmm. the thing about it is this new set of levels in air quotes is actually just the game but you get to play with using a different weapon Mm. and so it's like play the whole game over again just using a different weapon it's not super fun it's it's like chapter two of the phantom pain then (laughs) it's a little bit like chapter two no and, and so like I played through like maybe the first level mm-hmm. of because I, I have, you know, I have two Splatoon Amiibos and I was like, oh, cool. I'll get the, the costume. And I played through the first level. I was like, I can't do this. This is not like I already played all this stuff. I don't want to play it again. The costumes are pretty cool, but I don't want to replay the, whole, the entire game. So it isn't just one. like you scan them and you get like a cool extra. I feel like bonus. if if Mandy is like, yeah, that's not worth it for a costume. It's really not worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Considering you bought DLC-priced uh, costumes for other games. Well, 
oh, that was worth every penny. Yeah, for listeners who don't remember, uh, a couple weeks ago, Mandy admitted to buying some very expensive DLC costumes for Tales of Graces F. $30, yeah, for, right. I believe, is what the... 30 bucks worth every penny for these <laughs> costumes. Play through Splatoon a second time with a different weapon, not worth it no, for the costumes. But those costumes are so good. You're getting your theme music, and they give you <laughs> fictional backstories for the characters if they were students at this made-up high school, and then the old one gets a backstory as a teacher. Mm-hmm. Well, the, like, that's my point. Like, so they could have done a lot more with it, but they didn't do enough to make it worth what yeah. they're demanding you no, do. That's what DLC, that's the standard I judge all DLC costumes by, are those school costumes from mm-hmm. the Tales games. Like, they really, they created a whole alternate fantasy world where these costumes made sense. And they gave you the music from the fantasy world. They gave you the backstories from this fantasy world. That was that was worth my money. It sure. was super fun. What is the comment on the reduced shelf space? Uh, a, lo- a lot of stores now, because Nintendo just can't keep the Amiibo in stock, have severely cut back Nintendo shelf space. So you'll go to a store and you'll see a full aisle of Skylander, full aisle of Disney Infinity, and like a tiny little half shelf yeah. for Amiibo. A lot of GameStops I've seen now just have like a row, not even like a shelf section for mm-hmm. Amiibo. Yeah, and that's the thing is like, <laughs> Nintendo is like, oh, we don't want to hog shelf space with the Amiibos. Are that we're not going to have enough shelf spa- space mm. to fit all of the different models we want to do. And then because they've shipped so little, they were given less shelf space. It's like mm. a self-fulfilling prophecy. The thing with the cards, though, that really gets me is like these cards that are super cheap to produce, just produce the shit out of them. Mm-hmm. Because even if you're flooding your warehouses with merchandise, it's not going to cost you that much if you can't sell them. On top of that, Nintendo used to be a company that dealt exclusively in playing cards. Right. Yeah, but that was so long ago. They've probably torn down the infrastructure to make cards. So they have to rebuild that infrastructure. But there's a there's a there's a business system in place where their own company had done it successfully before. Like it actually seems to me <clears throat> like Nintendo was looking at it in the light of how their peripherals have generally done. They don't really care about the fact that there's people going, oh, well, you know, all this is benefiting is the scalpers because they're going, yeah, but we sold everything. Well, but I think like perhaps they didn't want to make these figures because, you know, there isn't much interest in the Wii U. But I'd say there's probably more interest in the Amiibos than the Wii U. Um, But if you can't, just call up Tops and say, hey, we need a fucking couple of cards. Yeah, but they're not just playing cards. They're well, cards with, like, magnetic or some they kind of... They have an NFC chip in them. Right, they have, so they're not that's just cards. super difficult to make? I mean... It might increase the, the cost. It might increase the cost, but it's not going to increase the cost to the point where one card is, is the same cost as producing one figure. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost. Especially that, if you make a billion of them. That right. may be true, But also, you know, these are cards. With the Amiibo thing, yeah, they were kind of dumb to not look ahead and go, people are going to want these as collectibles. But nobody's going to collect. No, that's incorrect, too, because I have a binder full of trading cards from the early 90s that are all full of comic book characters. So, yes, people will collect cards. Uh, Thing retracted. (laughs) Well, but here's the thing. So... Well, yeah, cards are collectible. Like, figures are collectibles. The the thing, too, is, like, Amiibos were designed for the Wii U, which Mm -hmm. didn't do well in sales. The cards are designed for the 3DS, which did phenomenal in sales. And they've released a card reader. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have the newest model of a 3DS and you can't scan an Amiibo directly on your 3DS, there is an NFC reader now Mm -hmm. that you can just purchase that lets you scan cards on your 3DS. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't know the statistics, but I would venture to guess that I would say a majority of the people that bought an Amiibo probably didn't really even use them in their intended fashion. I'm sure they were just... I have a Princess Peach Amiibo. I certainly don't have a Wii U. I got it because I wanted a Princess Peach Amiibo. There you go. And I could see that there would be interest for people who do require it to use it in the way that it was actually intended and designed to be used to, if they can't get a cool figure, at least get a card so that they can do whatever the fuck these things do. But to, to be unable to produce cards in a reasonable fashion, having been a card manufacturer in the, in the past, and also are unable to produce statues for the Amiibos when they used to uh, be a toy company, who's running the ship? Because it ain't Geralt. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, the, the thing about Nintendo is they're this bizarre company that the more I know about Nintendo, the less I understand them. And I mean, that start maybe that starts with like the Amiibo shortage, but you, you start looking into the company's history and it's like, what the fuck is this company? Well, wasn't it toys? That- well, it was playing cards at first, but the thing is Nintendo was a playing card company in 1889. Sounds like this really wholesome, family-friendly story, but it's not. Japan was a locked country for over 200 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, it was illegal to enter or exit Japan. It was illegal to import and export goods and Western goods that had already been brought into Japan, like playing cards were banned. So playing cards were completely illegal like in Japan. bicycle deck, run-of-the-mill playing cards. Yeah, they were, that was illegal. And playing games of cards was illegal. Uh, like pinochle. Yeah, a- anything. It was any, all illegal. Anything playing cards. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Strip pushi- poker. <laughs> Strip poker was right out. Hang on there. Unless you have your marking, <laughs> you are not getting through the door. So Fushigero Yamaguchi, who founded Nintendo, played cards illegally mm-hmm. like his whole life. And then the ban was lifted and he's like, oh, man, this is my chance. So he got he started up a playing card company. But this was still a super stigmatized thing. Like it's like, you know, now that weed is legalized in some states and you're like, oh, I'm going to start a marijuana dispensary. So that's <laughs> like that's what playing cards were for Nintendo. Really. Yeah. How uh, stigmatized? But like you, you mentioned the the weed analogy. Is it like that where most of the culture of the country was like, and eh, whatever, but it, the law still said it was. Or- well, Nintendo started out making two things. They made really high class, fancy Hanafuda cards, which is, a, which is a Japanese card game, and then they made cheap and expensive playing cards, and that was mostly associated with underground gambling and the yakuza. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so fairly stigmatized socially in the country. Though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was this was a down market thing. It was wasn't illegal per se, but, but it, it, was, was it was thought about. But the people who liked playing these cards had been doing it illegally. Right. Not a very highly thought of thing. But uh, even Nintendo's name is probably connected to the Yakuza. <laughs> Because Nintendo says that their name comes from the phrase Uno Ten Ni Makasaru, which means leave luck to heaven. But that doesn't really make sense. The characters aren't even written the same way. All mm-hmm. right. I speak no Japanese, so I'm taking your word for <laughs> yeah. everything here. But uh, they use the symbol for the ten in Nintendo is the same as the symbol for Tengu, who is a Japanese like folklore character who's associated with gambling. The, but the name Nintendo is also really similar to a term that's used by the Yakuza, which is Nikyoro. And the Yakuza, which is really similar to the mafia here, see themselves as sort of a humanitarian group, that they do all these illegal things, but oh, I do this and this, that's good for the people in my community. And so they have a saying for themselves, which is Nikyoro, which means chivalrous way. Right. And that's like sort of the motto of the Yakuza, and that's really similar to Nintendo, and it uses the same characters for the Nin and Do, and they use the Ten from Tengu. So so it's, it's like chivalrous gambling is kind yeah, of... Yeah, basically that's Nintendo's name, but leave luck to heaven. Most people don't know Japanese well enough. And see, in Japan, people know all this about Nintendo, but when video games became popular, Nintendo was entirely new to the West. Mm-hmm. So people didn't know all this crazy stuff about Nintendo. So they sort of have this salacious history in Japan, but they're this squeaky clean, perfect company in the Western world. And I think they work really hard to manage that image here. It's it's very mm. strange, but mm. really interesting. Yeah, that is that is bizarre and entertaining. And they, I mean, they got into a bunch of other like crazy shit too. Uh, starting in was it the fifties? The late in the late fifties, Nintendo was publicly funded. They went on the stock market and they got this huge influx of cash. And they were really experimental and they did some super weird things. And I don't mean like weird, like release some crazy products. Like they did some just insane things. They opened up a love hotel, which is a hotel that offers cheap rooms. Uh, they might even offer them like hourly. They do. Be- right. So they offer them hourly mm-hmm. because you're not staying overnight in the room. You're taking your mistress 
or a woman or a man that you just picked up on the street corner and staying in the room for the length of time that it takes for you two to enjoy each other's company Mm -hmm. or you three or you five and a donkey or whatever. Uh, But what I have heard is that the reason they had the love hotel wasn't necessarily to try to make a profit, but was because so many of the Nintendo employees had mistresses that they just had the love hotel so they could stay there for free Mm -hmm. instead of having to pay for these hotel rooms. And through that, their employees wound up saving a lot of money. (laughs) So that made it worthwhile for them economically to run this hotel that they didn't really make a profit on. Well, it was like executive level employees. It wasn't like Joe Schmo in the the card factory. Yeah, no, Joe Schmo in the card factory still had to pay for his love hotel. (laughs) (laughs) I had uh, heard an interesting story about these love hotels that they have these awesome amenities where it's basically like a, a radio. That has a few presets. So you could turn it on so it sounds like you're on the subway um, or that you're in like some sort of a busy um, environment like, a I don't know, a shop or something when you had to call home to tell your wife and or husband that uh, you're running a little late. That would not surprise me. <laughs> if, it, it seems like if you're going to run a business like that, yeah. you would have that kind of shit. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, and again, this is where being polyamorous is beneficial because instead of having to deal with all that bullshit, I'm just like, hey, honey, I'm going to bring my girlfriend over here while while you're out of town, okay? Okay, sweetie, whatever. Mm-hmm. You got to say, I'm sorry, I got to call my wife. And then you just roll over and you say, uh... you're right, my girlfriend's right over there. <laughs> During that time, too, they did a bunch of weird stuff that's less salacious. Like, they, they tried to make instant rice a uh-huh. big thing. <laughs> Uncle Ben style? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, people eat a lot more rice in Japan mm-hmm. than they eat here. So they're like, oh, instant rice. Everyone will love it, but nobody wanted instant rice. And they're yeah. like, vacuum cleaners. We'll, we'll, we'll make vacuum cleaners. And nobody wanted to buy vacuum cleaners from Nintendo. So if you use the, the term Nintendo sucks. <laughs> <laughs> a taxi service. And taxi service is probably just so people could get free taxi rides to the love <laughs> hotel. But... So, I'm just still surprised that instant rice didn't pick up. Yeah, for real. I or mean, like, taxis. Yeah, taxis, whatever. <laughs> <But> taxis <laughs> didn't pick up. But the thing is they that... They crazy. Boom! <laughs> you know, playing cards were not as, you know, this big CD thing anymore by mm-hmm. the late 1950s. Because So that's why they had to get into a love hotel, because they still needed to do something CD <laughs> well, and not playing cards. So they can't do I mean, They, they couldn't... A lot more companies were willing to make playing cards, and so it wasn't this market that Nintendo had cornered. So they were like, we have to diversify Mm -hmm. we have to do something so they tried they tried a lot Mm -hmm. of things and uh one of the more natural things they tried was toys because at that by that time playing cards were close enough to toys they felt like maybe they understood the toy market but they had a really hard time so the first successful toy the uh president of nintendo hiroshi amochi saw one of the engineers playing with a claw game you know, you just, the claw goes down, grab something, and he's like, there, that's what we're doing. And it actually worked. Hmm. Yeah, it was called the Ulta Hand. Uh, Gunpei Yokoi, who created a lot of Nintendo's most successful products. Yeah, good old Gunpei. <laughs> <laughs> he worked on the assembly line for Nintendo, and he was just, when he got his breaks, he was tinkering around and making this toy, and then he got caught doing it by the press, and he's like, oh, I'm going to get fired. And he's like, no, no, like, make a bunch of them. That'll be our big Christmas thing. That was the first successful toy mm-hmm. Nintendo had. They tried a bunch of other weird toys. And then None they fired really them. cut on. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, go for your toy, man. He's, he's done some good stuff. Did he create Cup and Ball? I, I don't think so, but he created the Game Boy, didn't he? Dude just like tinkering with stuff. And then the president's like, I like this. Let's go yes, with it. Mm-hmm. And, and as I understand the story, like Nintendo was on the verge of bankruptcy mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah. Like, you know, one more failed project, it would have been all done. Yeah, because so. their cards aren't selling that well. Nobody wanted to buy their instant rice. You know, the Love Hotel wasn't actually making the money. Mm-hmm. And so it was making the love. 
but uh, but not the money. Yeah. And and then he saw the claw, and the claw worked, mm-hmm. and the rest is history. Yeah. yeah. And then Nintendo was a toy company throughout the '60s and '70s and into the '80s when uh-huh. they got into making those pocket the game games. Watch. Yeah, yeah. A, a, like electronic games, and they made a lot of really weird stuff too, like the Love Testers, which they had versions of that here too. Like oh, they did, and I was a hot stud. <laughs> So they sort of went from making toys to making electronic toys to making video games. But their their toy business was super weird, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they tried to uh, rip off Lego and they made uh, it was called the, the N&B block and it looked exactly like a Lego. In it fact, really I can't tell which one is does. which. Yeah. Well, the only difference is on the, the circle uh-huh. part that connects to other blocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Lego will say Lego on that part. Mm-hmm. And a Nintendo and in B block will say N B. Yeah, they do look different on the bottoms. Oh yeah, on the on the bottoms they look different too. Uh, they they were doing like round pieces, and so they're like, you can build a rocket ship with N blocks. Can mm. you build a rocket ship with Lego? Well, yeah, but it will be square. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is pretty cool. They go straight up sued Nintendo, but oh, they actually imagine. lost. Like really? Nintendo came out on top on the lawsuit. Well, they had the Yakuza on their side. And so <laughs> they <laughs> made him an offer that they politely couldn't refuse. Oh, and- <laughs> Gunpei Yokoi, uh, when he first started working for Nintendo, he said one of his jobs was to go check the playing card vending machines all the time because if they didn't check them a couple times a day, the Yakuza would come by the Nintendo offices and be like, you still be like, like faulty playing cards and this guy was cheating and blah 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 because they'd just be obsessed that nintendo was selling bad playing cards and that Mm. people were cheating with the playing cards that they got out of their vending machines Hmm. and if all of this sounds super crazy um you know there's all kinds of rumors and stuff i don't know if it was ever actually confirmed that the american comics industry had a bunch of mob ties as, as well and so you think you know you think of things like oh nintendo's rebranding video games is a thing for kids but they they were a company with known yakuza connections and you think oh that would never happen here like i mean there's there's the possibility that you know maybe it did yeah uh harry donenfeld who owned national allied comics which eventually became dc comics was rumored to have mob ties but to the best of my knowledge none of that was ever confirmed yeah and there's like some crazy stories and stuff that you'll hear about the old comic book industry you know, you would have these big newspaper stands in New York and Chicago, and the, they didn't want to sell comics. Like, oh, these aren't selling well. But then you had, like, you know, the mafia guys come in and shake them up and be like, no, you're selling our stuff, man. And yeah, so then yeah. people could buy Superman and Batman comics. Right. They're and... selling our comics, see? <laughs> right. no, as, They're selling as our much, comics, see? <laughs> as much as I'm not going to yeah, defend Club. organized crime, uh, it's absolutely true that if you look throughout, it's certainly American history, and I'd be surprised if this isn't true for any other country where organized crime was a thing, a lot of culture and art got uh, shot through countries because of organized crime. You know what else organized crime had their hands in? Steven Seagal movies. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain why they made any money. Yeah, and then he teamed up with the FBI and just slap boxed the shit out of the mob. He said, I'm done. I'll make terrible movies on my own. Next one's going to be based in Alaska. <laughs> that was a spot on Steven Seagal impression. Mm-hmm. But you know, Nintendo had to do the uh, re- like the toy company thing when they came out with the NES, just because the video game crash had happened and investors weren't like, "No, that's a video game." Did you see what happened with Atari? Mm-hmm. We're we're not doing that again. They're like, yeah. "No, no, we're, this is a toy. This is a family entertainment system." That's why it was the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the Famicom, or the yeah. Famicom. Yeah. yeah, I mean uh, the 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 the, the industry industry crashed you know there were cartridge bread lines around the fucking <laughs> corner people had to you know spend just massive amounts yeah. of money for just one cartridge of et yeah they were like tom joe ghosts all over the place it was ridiculous uh, i've actually read interviews with the creator of atari nolan bushnell and you know he finally did sell the company and then he was still working for the company 
And the executives who are now running the business were like, they wouldn't listen to him. And so he left. And then the uh, the video game crash happened. Mm-hmm. And then because there was like such a vacuum for video game products, Nintendo just came in and was like, no, let's rebrand this as a kid's thing, re- rebrand video games as a kid's thing, and we'll sell to kids. And if we sell this as a toy, boom, and and it worked. They, they probably – saved video games Mm -hmm. in some sense of the of the term oh absolutely i mean they basically created the foundation for pretty much everything that we know and 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 love and consider video games part of what made nintendo capable of doing what it could do was that vacuum from the crash Mm -hmm. and was the fact that it marketed itself as a toy there's no custer's last stand on our machine (laughs) well but (laughs) there should have been none of that anyways but you know and i'd say all the better that that atari didn't and nolan left because otherwise we may not have had chuck e cheese which was (laughs) in my uh youth basically uh xanadu the peak of the mountain that i had seldom able to ascend to but uh yeah, Nolan Bushnell did found both Atari and Chuck E. Cheese, but I think he had actually founded Chuck E. Cheese before he left Atari, and so that was part of why he could just leave when he got frustrated with it. He was just like, I got this other thing going on, I'll just focus on this, and you guys can do whatever, and I'm out. I've been to plenty of Chuck E. Cheese's. I don't know that I've ever had one slice of their pizza. Yeah, I ate a bunch of Chuck E. Cheese pizza because that was the the place to go for birthday parties Mm -hmm. in the early 90s. But Mm -hmm. I do not remember what it tasted like. I I remember Chuck E. Cheese had the Jurassic Park arcade game, so I liked it. Well, they had Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. Yep, that's a fucking great game. Mm -hmm. I will sit there and play the old Ninja Turtles arcade game for hours. Yeah. I lived way out in the boonies as a kid, and so like... I never got to go to a Chuck E. Cheese. They would have the commercials for it all the time. And I, I did have, for some reason, I have some little, like, figures of the character. Like, oh, I have yeah. Chuck E. Cheese and a, a couple of the other characters. And I knew there were Chuck E. Cheese figures. And I would see the the ads on TV and just be sad because they would be like, this is the play. If you're a kid, this is, this is where your dreams come mm. true. And I was just, like, sit there being sad and, like not being able to experience it for myself. Actually, when I was uh, of the right age, what we actually had was Showbiz Pizza. Showbiz, yeah. We had Major Magics. Right, which eventually got bought out by Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. And I just remember watching TV one time and the the jingle, you know, Chuck E. Cheese's where a kid can be a kid. I don't know if y'all remember that commercial, but... It used to be Showbiz Pizza, and then all of a sudden one day the exact same commercial, but it was Chuck E. Cheese's. I'm like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so Nintendo rebranded itself as a toy, mm-hmm. and it tried to deliver on that. I mean, like, it came up with a bunch of peripherals. I still have a power glove that doesn't work Nintendo because... didn't make the power glove. It was made by Mattel. Mattel. It was yeah. called the American Power Glove. So it actually oh. was a toy. <laughs> It was officially licensed mm-hmm. by okay. Nintendo. So it was officially licensed. It wasn't actually. It was made by Mattel. That's interesting. I have learned something today. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I have a power glove. It doesn't work. It doesn't connect to anything because I cut off the cord because I use it in in the wrestling ring to punch people with. But I have a power glove. Mm-hmm. Uh, what entertains me most about the power glove is Nintendo was trying motion control decades before or anybody, Mattel was or Mattel was. <laughs> They were trying motion control decades before it became a thing, and now Mm. it's dead again because apparently it didn't work this time either. But, you know, like, they were trying stuff early on, just like they were when they first, uh, you know, got a lot of money and were Mm -hmm. trying with the vacuum cleaners and the instant rice. So, like, I kind of appreciate that Nintendo tries just all this random bizarre shit just to see what will work. Mm-hmm. They released a virtual reality system in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Right. They actually had a card reader that basically worked the same way as the NFC card reader they just released. It was called the e-reader. It was for the Game Boy Advance. And I remember it was that. to You scanned cards to play NES games mm-hmm. on your Game Boy Advance. Mm. There was also uh, the Super Nintendo, I believe, in Japan had... The Super uh, Famicom. The Super Famicom. I'm from America. It's all going to be the Super Nintendo. No, but uh, had a uh, dial-up internet connection that you could download games on. The, the, the Sega Master System? The Sega Master System also had that. 
Was it the Famicom had that too? I, or yeah. the Super Famicom? I believe the Super Famicom did. Yep, Famicom modem. Oh, yep. wow. I it was didn't... developed by Nintendo and released in 1988. Oh, wow. So they had that in 1988. Like, they were trying some shit. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I appreciate that. Even when you look back with the benefit of hindsight and go, okay, well, that didn't work. Or, like, with the Virtual Boy, okay, well, maybe you shouldn't have released a prototype that was half finished and called it a finished console. But... You were trying shit, so that's interesting. Well, I've learned something today as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have all learned From things Rev, today. nonetheless. <laughs> right? I think just even the introduction of a handheld console kind of changed the game. The Game Boy absolutely changed fucking everything. I mean, like, okay, so there were handheld consoles to begin with, mm-hmm. or like earlier was the Game & Watch, uh, was the Tiger, uh, but those were very simplistic things. Uh, where like the LCD screens, where they didn't yeah. have a lot of like a range of movement or mm-hmm. anything. I used it to have the just, Double Dragon, and... right? And you know the the music consisted of boop, boop, boop. They were twelve bucks at, mm-hmm. at Target. The Game Boy was a legitimate console in and of itself with yeah. actual games that had replayability. It had Metroid fucking two on it which is a fantastic game yeah uh it had kirby's dreamland Mm -hmm. which was also fantastic like it had real games on it i loved the adventure island game boy games as a kid and i can't remember why because i played them as a doll and it's like these aren't that good but as a kid i fucking loved them it had a huge library too yeah i will still play final fantasy legends even though it's a really bare bones game but i still love it yeah yeah, and I mean, the Game Boy had peripherals too. Uh, yeah, yeah, they had. They had uh, yeah, like the Game Boy camera. So you could take pictures on your Game Boy, mm-hmm. but then, you know, they were just on your Game Boy. Yeah. <laughs> so they had a Game Boy printer and it used like receipt paper. And so yeah. you'd print up these terrible, uh, low quality photos. But I mean, I have a ton of affection for the Game Boy camera. At one point in time, I was flying back from Florida with my brothers. And our flight got canceled and we were stuck in the airport for 16 hours till they finally just put us up in a hotel room. Mm. And the only thing we had in our Game Boy was the Game Boy camera. (laughs) And so we took our Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z trading cards that we had like binders full of. And we took pictures of them and created a Sailor Moon Dragon Ball Z crossover and put all the pictures together and like added text and just made an entire episode of a fake cartoon over the course of 16 hours while we were stuck at an airport. But we didn't have the Game Boy printer then, so mm-hmm. we had to wait like a few more Christmases to, to print those pictures up. Yeah. And share them with your... With the world, <laughs> like little zines, the the world wanted to see. Can you imagine if if the 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 Game Boy just like had a self like a, a phone peripheral, like they would have been the first smartphone. Yeah, would have been the N gauge. <laughs> I was just about to mention that one. Side talking on your Game Boy. <laughs> well, so I mean, you had the power glove, you had the zapper. You had the uh, the pad that you ran on. Nintendo released oh. a, a lockout for the NES. <laughs> like it was actually Nintendo made. It was just a security lock so mm-hmm. that kids could could get their Nintendo taken away. So wow. I mean, it's not weird that it existed, but it's hilarious that Nintendo developed and put it out to me. Yeah, that's cool. My favorite bizarre thing about the the Game Boy peripherals is the Game Boy camera. Uh, the menu options had uh, a run option uh, for, like, I think it was for when you had the printer plugged in, then you could, like, you know, print stuff up. But if you didn't have the stuff that you needed plugged in to make the run option do something, instead it would pop up this really creepy face and the text, what are you running from? And, like, <laughs> there are some kids who had fucking nightmares because of that. Oh, man, the Game Boy camera was the best. Mm-hmm. The thing about that, too, is, like, you had to buy the paper to print stuff on separately. So, I mean, oh, they yeah. probably made a killing. Yeah, they're like, these kids can print their own damn cards now. <laughs> well, good thing it wasn't cardstock because you'd be at a loss for any of it. Yeah, right. And, and then, you know, there's also the infamous Rob the Robot, mm-hmm. the, the peripheral they released alongside the NES that could work with two games and you had to like hope that it functioned correctly when it was dropping the spinning tops and it was slow as hell and never worked right but they had a robot 
So that was kind of cool. They did have a robot. And now the robot's in Super Smash Brothers. As a kid, though, in the 80s, being like, I have a robot that plays video games with me. Like, how fucking cool is that? That was cool for 10 minutes until you realized you couldn't fucking play the game with it. If you could afford one. Right. I actually did have a Rob, although not when it first came out. I, um... So a friend of mine gave me his old NES when he moved and didn't want it anymore. So I had an NES. And then somebody uh, was having a garage sale and they had a Rob with all the parts. And they're like, yeah, five bucks. Like, OK, here's your five dollars. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing about like when the Nintendo was marketed as a kid's thing, it was like your toys that your parents would be like oh okay they went off to college so these (laughs) toys we're just gonna get rid of and so like as a kid it was really easy to get your hands on that Mm -hmm. stuff i mean that's how i got my first gaming console which was in atari 2600 is my neighbor went off to college Mm -hmm. and his parents were like well what do we do with this atari like let's just give it to the neighbor kids Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe I'm just out of the loop because I'm 35 and not eight. (laughs) But like, uh, I don't know. Is that still a thing? Like, do people just be like, ah, this guy, you know, my son went off to college. Let's give his PS3 away. Like, I think they take it with, you know. I honestly think nowadays, um, and I'm pointing the finger at the game chasers um, primarily, but there's this fucking ridiculous craze now where a super nintendo is going to run you 85 dollars you know retro consoles like especially thanks to the internet too Mm -hmm. like everyone knows what these are worth now Mm -hmm. and they're worth something you can still get a deal but chances are you go to a garage sale some assholes got ebay up and he's like no i'll give you these five nintendo games for 42 (laughs) dollars and right you know and that's or you go to a con where you know no they're selling you collector items or god forbid you go to a store well, like, right. there was a, a big chiptune scene, too, that that made the, um, it brought the Game Boy way up in value again, mm-hmm. too, because nobody's actually making Game Boys, and so, like, the the last remaining ones are getting, you know, passed around in, like, the chiptune scene or, like, the, the retro collector scene, and so mm-hmm. they, they did, like, like, regain a lot of their value. We've kind of gotten off Rob, but I wanted to add that somebody actually did make a new Rob game. <laughs> 2014 so there aren't two rob games anymore there are three it was uh-huh. called uh <laughs> oh, well, eight big just... xmas 2014 <laughs> and it like plays holiday movies what? eight big xmas 2014 <laughs> <laughs> a, a really that name transcends time yeah, it'll, it it'll never get old no especially if it's 2014 I mean. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> But uh, it like plays Christmas music. It makes Rob dance in time with the music. Cool. Well, that just increases Rob's worth by like five extra bucks. Mm-hmm. I know. Right? I the know. Rob sale like... should have charged me ten. Yeah. <laughs> I have a Rob amiibo. I was actually. gonna say that brings us back to where we but, started. But does he dance to Christmas tunes? He doesn't dance to Christmas tunes. He just kind of sits there. He likes House of Pain. Jump around. And you can use them in Smash Brothers. Maybe yeah. fight against them. That's, that's true. Yeah, so the Amiibos, man. Uh, let's face it. The Amiibos are hard to find, and the cards are hard to find, because Nintendo thinks that will benefit them. Mm-hmm. It, it's that way because they want it that way. I mean, I think Nintendo still thinks the Amiibos are peripherals and not collectibles. They don't... Nintendo is many things, but I don't think they're stupid. Oh, I absolutely think Nintendo is stupid. <laughs> not Reg. <laughs> Fair enough. I think Reg has got a, a good head on his shoulders. Well, his, his broad body shoulders. is ready. <laughs> He's got broad shoulders. They can't not realize people are fucking collecting these things. They just either don't care or have just so sorely misjudged the market that they deserve to lose that money. Well, I think, well, I mean, I think part of it is, is first of all, corporate culture, and second of all, Japanese corporate culture, which is apparently, you know, even worse than American corporate culture of just being like, we have this idea, we're going to stand by it. And then, you know, the people that are a step below the people making the decisions are all yes men. And Mm so, you know, the, the people who are like, oh, hey, these are selling really well in America. We should release more to America are not allowed to say that. Mm -hmm. And so you just have this, like, really bad situation Mm -hmm. where, you know, the executives are like, fuck you, and, like, the people below them are like, 
Like this is this is selling out. This is a problem. We need to talk about it, but they're not allowed to yeah. because they're scared of losing their jobs mm-hmm. and yada yada. And it just like perpetuates. And I feel like Sony doesn't operate that way. I think Sony lets Sony of America do what they want. Mm-hmm. And I think Nintendo tends to control Nintendo of America and not really let them be like, hey, the market here is doing this. We need to react to it. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, your face isn't full of scars. Shave that beard. <laughs> I, I think uh, I, I have a lot of sympathy for Nintendo of America with the Amiibo situation. I remember on their Twitter account back at Easter, they were like, hey, what Amiibo do you want to get in your Easter basket? And people just railed on this poor person yeah. running the Nintendo Twitter. Like they got like thousands of tweets like, I can't get a single Amiibo because you should die, Nintendo. <laughs> Which, yeah. that's horrible, but also release more Aminos. <laughs> no, I mean, it was hilarious, but I'm so sympathetic because it's not this... Well, the person running Nintendo of America's social media account has nothing to do with this, but Nintendo of America <laughs> in general has no control over the bad Amiibo situation, and they're probably the ones who have to deal with all the fallout in the West, and mm-hmm. the stores complaining because their shelves are unstocked and they look really ugly. Well, and uh, it probably doesn't help that they don't don't have games to fill those holes in the shelves but uh i think you're you're damned if you do you're damned if you're a me don't <laughs> so you're bad damned if you nintendo do <laughs> you're damned if you nintendo don't you're just damned okay i don't know what's going on in nintendo i don't like it but i don't like a lot of things half glass gaming out